Hey, this is Veronica Mosek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping, where we show you how to minimize bookkeeping and maximize profits. In this video, I share with you my uh, system for doing your own bookkeeping in five monthly steps. By following my system, you'll be able to have much more success doing your own books because you'll actually know what you're supposed to be doing every month when you work on your books. It's not just about entering transactions in QuickBooks Online. It's actually about following a system for doing your own books. So here's my system for doing your books in five monthly steps. Let's go over the monthly bookkeeping workflow. Why do you need a monthly bookkeeping workflow? Well, bookkeeping is cyclical. Bookkeeping actually happens in steps. Daily steps, weekly steps, monthly steps. It's all based on a cycle. You need to standardize your processes or your workflow. The more that you do something in the same order, in the same way, the more that it'll be familiar to you. You'll get in the flow of things. You'll get in the habit of doing things. A lot of business owners won't work on their bookkeeping because they never make it a habit. If you're committed to working on your own bookkeeping, you have to develop healthy habits for working on your books on a regular basis. You'll also have a predictable way of working on your books, as I just said. You'll get on a schedule. You'll get used to working on your books a little bit every day, a little bit every week, and every month. And most importantly, you'll get organized, which is what every small business owner wants to do. When it comes to their finances, they want to get organized. After working with hundreds of small business owners and helping them with their own bookkeeping and even doing their own bookkeeping for them, I have developed the 5MB system. This is the system that I developed so you can do your monthly bookkeeping in five steps. Let's go over the steps. Step number one is record. Number two, reconcile. Number three, review. Number four, revise. And number five, restrict. Let's go over each one. Step number one is record. And all that means is that you add transactions to QuickBooks. Most business owners think that doing their own bookkeeping is adding transactions to QuickBooks. And actually, this is just the first step of doing your own bookkeeping. So how do transactions get into QuickBooks? You can add them through the bank feeds by connecting QuickBooks to your bank and credit card accounts. You can do it manually like entering invoices, customer payments, deposits, filing sales tax reports, processing payroll, things like that. And you also may have your QuickBooks integrated with applications or apps like PayPal, Square, and others like that. Perhaps some accounts payable apps, accounts receivable, payroll, receipt storage, and others. There could be many apps that you're using to bring transactions into QuickBooks. The second step is reconcile. And here you reconcile the bank and credit card statement balances to QuickBooks. This step shouldn't be confused with working on your bank feeds. Many QuickBooks users refer to working on their bank feeds as a reconciliation, but in fact, Technically, it's not a reconciliation. You're working through the bank feeds. A reconciliation in this case refers to taking the end of the month balance from the bank or credit card statement and reconciling that amount back to QuickBooks. The reason why you would perform this step, why you would reconcile, is so that you can ensure that all transactions were recorded into QuickBooks and that there are no duplicate or missing transactions. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, why do I need to do this? I'm already working through the bank feeds. Everything's being downloaded by the bank or credit card account into QuickBooks. Why do I have to reconcile? And the reason is because bank feeds break all the time. Banks do maintenance. Sometimes the bank feeds don't download. 
sometimes transactions are duplicated. And how would you know if they were duplicated unless you did a reconciliation? And the reconciliation is one of the cornerstones of doing proper bookkeeping. Any bookkeeper, accountant, or CPA, if they know what they're doing, will tell you that the books have to be reconciled to the bank and credit card statements. And in fact, one of the things that we generally have to do for clients when we do their books is we first have to reconcile all of their accounts before we can then continue on to do any sort of cleanup or customization. That means then that the reconciliation process is very important. The third step is review. After everything has been recorded into QuickBooks, the accounts have been reconciled, then you want to go through a review process. And you're essentially reviewing to make sure that transactions were recorded accurately. Some of the steps that you might include in a review is to ensure that there are no old items in the bank feeds window, to ensure that all bank and credit card accounts have been reconciled, to ensure that there are no old uncleared transactions in the bank reconciliation window, to review for old balances in undeposited funds, review the profit and loss report for unusual or unexpected balances, review the balance sheet report also for unusual or unexpected balances, and to investigate any unusual balances if you found any. The fourth step is revise. After you perform the review and you find some transactions that perhaps are not recorded to the right account, they may be miscategorized or something needs to be reviewed. Perhaps there were some duplicate transactions that need to be voided. In the revise step, you make corrections and adjustments based on your review process. This is a very important step because here's where you can catch mistakes and make the necessary corrections to make the books accurate. The fifth and final step is restrict. And here you want to close the books in QuickBooks to prevent accidental changes to the books. Here's where you'll go into the settings to enter a closing date and you'll be able to then lock yourself out essentially of your QuickBooks uh, for that time frame, so that you don't make accidental changes. But don't worry, you are still able to make changes. You just have to enter a password. But this is a very effective way of preventing you or someone else who works on your books from making changes to the box. And I'm sure you can understand that if you've already gone through all of this, the monthly bookkeeping steps, you wouldn't want to make changes to the books after the fact, because that would affect the accuracy of the books. And when the books are not accurate, then you can't rely on them. And the most important thing about uh, having accurate books and going through this process of doing your own bookkeeping and doing it the right way of organizing yourself, feeling in, in control of your finances is to be able to then rely on the books so that you can look at reports and really know how your business is doing so that you can make critical decisions for your business. That concludes the monthly bookkeeping workflow. If you like this content, then like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel so you can get my latest videos. I'm Veronica Wasek with 5-Minute Bookkeeping.